Okay, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to part four of my t uh, Star Trek Online uh, tutorial walkthrough. Alright, we are currently heading down to the barricades and experiencing a little bit of rubber band lag. That's always fun. Uh, probably my computer said uh, I, I sometimes get lag with my internet connection. So we have to defend engineering for a certain amount of time. Which basically just means shooting these drones as they come through the door. Uh, fortunately, they mention in storyline-wise that there's something wrong with the Borg and that they're, they seem disconnected somehow. Which kind of gives us an uh, ex explanation for why the uh, Borg, well, suck. Like, even worse than normal. So, alright. We defend for a certain number of seconds. It's not very long. And then we have to come over here and talk to Commander Davies. Uh, the Borg are still pushing us here, but now that our internal sensors are back online, we can locate and isolate them. We would have lost the ship to the Borg without you. And we find out that the Borg have hit our ship while I was over here. So I can head over to a transporter. around the corner here so that I can go back to my ship and it's kind of fun because the NPCs will talk and they'll do things and you know, this drone is unlike any we've other we've ever seen so why were there only one of these things in the attack blah 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 there we go talk to the transporter chief Big colony sounds needs help. Uh, blah blah blah. Ah, and then what they do is they have you talk to the various bridge officers so that you can get an overview of what bridge officers do. Uh, tackle bridge officers, for the most part, are just like what your uh, bridge, what your main class is. Tactical guys give you a lot of damage boost stuff. Science guys give you weird funky powers. Uh, they do have some heals, they have some buffs, they have some debuffs. And then engineers tend to be um, heals and toughness buffs and regenerations and such like that. So then we go back and we talk to the chief engineer again. And when a quest is done, you'll get the little check mark. And that usually means that you're about to get some cool yep, skill points, expertise, and hey, we get our first tactical officer. So, we get Korspa. Now you can uh, do some fun stuff. Um, let's that automatically. Oh, yep, Korspa. Uh, here's your character. You get the little paper doll where you can put in their gear. Uh, Every character has this, you do too. Uh, you actually have two weapon slots, a kit slot, your body slot where you put armor, shield slot, and then you have four device slots. And the devices are things like healing things and eventually tribbles that will heal you out of combat or give you damage buffs or debuffs or whatever. Uh, your ship has a paper doll where you can uh, put in consoles and stuff to give you bonuses. Uh, under edit record, you can change the name of your your NPCs, uh, which is always just fun to think about. You, I don't like your name, so I'm renaming you. As captain, that is my right. Uh, it shows their skills. Um, as you assign skill points, you'll be able to uh, promote your character higher and higher, but you can never promote them higher than you are. So, I don't have any. I don't have enough experience to really put anything into anything yet. So I'm not going to bother. And so we head over to the here, and we beam to the ship. And we go through the loading screen because well, you get used to this. All right. 
We are currently getting status reports from all decks, sir. The Borg attacked. Oh, yeah, I forgot to mention. Uh, your ranking officers were all killed while I was over sa saving the other ship from the Borg. So, I've been put in command. As a lowly ensign, suddenly you're in charge. Uh, fun way to get a battlefield promotion. Ah, uh, here, it'll tell you here. The Borg attacked while you were helping save the Kittimer ensign. We have casualties throughout the ship. Weapons are offline. And the Borg were... It looks like they deliberately targeted officers, sir. The captain and the senior staff were all among the casualties. That makes you apt acting captain. <laughs> Which is just fun. Alright. So, we have to go... Beam survivors off some ships and take them to the USS Seacole. Eh, I don't really need to learn movement. Um, but if you're not sure how things work, well, there's the USS Kittimer. Uh, it is in bad, bad shape. Uh, and there's also oh, there's some other players. And the USS Phoenix and the USS Plasma Guzzler, because, you know, you get some lovely lovely players that just get some great names. Uh, I suppose at least it's not offensive. There's a few of these names in here that are just un unbelievable. And uh, I'm usually pretty lax about things like that, but every now and then you'll just see somebody that you just have to report. Because, you know, it's just wrong. Alright, so we're going to beam over the, US the survivors from the Kelvin. Yeah, that ship doesn't look good, does it? And then the next one we have to go over to is the Oakland. Oh yeah, your camera tends to focus on the ship, on, on your target. So, you either want to clear it by clicking on nothing at all so that you don't have a target, or you click on whatever your current target is. So let's stop and we'll beam over survivors. Alright, and then the next ship is the Boar, which is up here. Beam over survivors from the four. And then finally, we need to head to the Montreal. Now, the Montreal is quite a ways away, and you'll notice that when you're in impulse, you're a little slow. But if you click the, uh, the double arrows here to go to full impulse, you go much faster. Of course, while you're in full impulse, your steering is really crap. And you'll find that some ships have really high inertia ratings really low inertia rating, something like that. So they don't stop very well. Uh, you get some of the really big ships like the Odyssey, and you hit full impulse, and then you go to stop, and they'll sit there and they'll basically slide through space for like 10 kilometers before they'll finally come to a halt. Uh, the little ships are nice, though, because they'll, they'll, they'll stop on a dime. So we'll beam the survivors over from Montreal. And then we head over to the Sea Call. Sea Call's a nice science-looking ship. They got the little golf balls on the front. Survivors are aboard. And then we're getting a hail from the USS Renown. Uh, I'm going to pause for just a moment. Okay, so we're getting hailed by the Renown. So we'll go on screen. USS Triton, this is Captain Vallock of the USS Renown. Take it, I'm speaking to the surviving officer in command. I like that he just assumes... Apparently, I look like Captain Material. Ah, so we're going to go pick up the Renown, and they're going to repair my ship. So that I can fight, because their ship's too badly damaged. But they can fix my ship up, because if you notice right now, the uh, weapon bars and stuff down at the bottom are grayed out. And before I forget... Um, You'll notice at the bottom of the screen here, there are three bridge crew slots. Uh, red, yellow, and blue, because you can put one uh, tactical, one science, and one engineering officer on. I only have one uh, tactical officer at the moment, but I can slot her in. 
So I do that, and you'll see she shows up at the bottom. And she's got a starting power of high-yield torpedoes, which means um, for the photon torpedoes that I'm currently packing, she'll launch two torpedoes at once rather than a single torpedo. It's nice for a little extra punch. Uh, but as, you, as I said, you'll notice they're all grayed out, and that's because my ship is currently damaged, so I have no weapons. So we're going to repair and resupply. Weapon systems are back online. Alright, and we're going to warp over to some Borg. They'll do this when they don't want to have you mess around flying through space, and usually this is a zone transit transition too. So our weapons are back online, we can finish them off. Uh, you can look up stuff about ranges, firing arcs, and weapons. Um, Alright, if you your weapons are down here, um, you have a couple of interesting loadouts uh, on your ship. So first off, this shows your shields and your various shield facings. Uh, and that shows you how full your shields are. Obviously, as you take damage, they'll go down, down, and down until there's no shields left. Uh, you have a little uh, outline of your ship here, 100%. That shows how much of your hull is available. Uh, down here, you have crew. Uh, crew is fun because crew will come back at a fairly decent rate. Um, but they, uh, but the more uh, crew you have, the faster your hull repairs. And then this shows your power levels. Uh, weapons, uh, shields engines and auxiliary power which science powers you tend to use auxiliary powers and some uh, oddball weapons will use auxiliary power as the basis for how much damage they'll do and uh, some stuff will let you adjust uh, engineering powers will let you adjust auxiliary power to boost your other uh, power levels and you can also adjust them right now they're all equal I can put full power to, sh to engines which will boost engines to max, takes it out of weapons and shields. Full power to shields, which takes it out of energy engines and auxiliary. Gives you and the higher your uh, the shield rating is, the faster the shields will regen. And what I tend to run with, especially for these lower levels where I'm just focused on trying to kill the stuff as quickly as possible, uh, I'll I'll power to uh, weapons. Uh, over here shows what weapons you currently have on your ship. We'll open up the ship's uh, paper doll, USS Triton, and it shows you that I have a phaser beam array in the front, a phaser beam array in the back, and a torpedo launcher. And as you can see, phaser beam, phaser beam, torpedo launcher. Um, what's fun is if you, well, let's zoom out a little bit so you can see this a little easier, if you kind of hover over for a couple seconds, you can see uh, what your firing arc is. So this is the forward uh, arc for my uh, phaser beam. This is the rear arc. And you'll notice there's a bit of overlap. So ideally with ships that are firing phaser beam arrays, what you want to do is broadside. You want to come up, kind of kind of angle your ship so that you're firing from the side. However, I also have torpedoes, and you'll see the torpedoes have a much narrower front arc. So it's a toss-up as to what you want to do. Uh, phasers will do more damage against shields. They do decent damage against hull as well. Uh, torpedoes, on the other hand, don't do a ton of damage against shields. Um, but they will do a lot more damage against hull. So what you generally want to do is try to whittle down the shields, and then you want to turn so that you can fire your torpedoes and hit their hull before their shields come back. It's a little tricky sometimes because it doesn't always work as well as you'd like, but... Uh, you have heart, hot, beat, hot bars here, um, where you can show uh, one, two, three, you know, shows what uh, I hit one, it'll fire that. Um, the other thing I did was, if you left click, I'm sorry, right click on a uh, weapon, it'll turn it so that it auto fires. So once I start firing, it won't stop until I detarget, until I stop targeting something. And then down here you can see Corspa, and you can see her uh, power. Uh, they're currently grayed out, so I can't use her power yet. Um, I'm not entirely sure why. 
So let's speed up and get over to an enemy. Um, we're going to go full impulse. I'm guessing they're just grayed out because it's part of the tutorial. So we're going to get in, and then if you hit spacebar, it'll start firing. And like I said, I'm going to turn sideways so you can see both of my beams are firing. And these things don't really have shields, and they're already partially damaged. They go down really fast. Uh, if you tab, you can tab target, of course, and I'm going to hit two. And two will fire a torpedo. And boom, you can see it does a lot of damage because this thing has no shields. And then, blow it up. Ah, okay, so now she's unlocked so that you can use her abilities. So we're going to warp over to some active Borg cubes and fight some more Borg. And we zoom in. So first thing we need to do is get two, two probes. We're going to fight this one since they're fighting that other one. And in this one you'll see the probes have full shields. So I'm going to fire my torpedo. And if you look, the torpedo did about half the damage it did last time. Because that thing had uh, shields up still. Still goes down pretty easy because, well, after all, this is a tutorial. And if you died really easily in the tutorial, well, nobody would play the game after the tutorial, probably, unless they were masochists. Yeah, I know some people like really hard games out there, and yeah, more power to you. Well, I've killed both the ones I need to kill. Unfortunately, I'm still in combat because there was a third probe. And, uh... So we will kill him real quick. Uh, I have plasma fire, that's why I'm glowing. And I have the uh, a DOT going, damage over time. That's annoying, but there's not a whole lot you can do about that. Um... At least not yet. Eventually there's uh, some science powers you can get that'll let you get rid of those uh, plasma fires. For the time being. So we're going to get closer to the planet. And we're going to fly down so that we fly out of range for the most part of that probe. Uh, generally speaking, all weapon... Yep, nope, nope, we got him. We caught, his, caught the edge of him. So we'll have to kill him. Generally speaking, most weapons have a 10... Uh, 10 kilometer range. So if you stay with outside of 10 kilometers, and you'll see that the uh, the range is orange, and it's white for this guy, and that's because he is now in range. That's a, a way to tell if you can hit something. And not all weapon, not all weapons have the same ranges, but generally speaking, 10 kilometers is the sweet spot. Although the closer you are, the more damage you will do. So. Okay, so we are heading down to the Vega Colony. And occasionally you see these little pop-up messages. Uh, there are special ships you can get out of lockboxes. You will learn to hate lockboxes. Um, oh, hey, there we go. It was covered up by a window that you probably can't see. If I go to Ops... And as you get into the uh, or it, as you get into the atmosphere of planets, you'll get this rumbling. Ensign, this is Commander Kelly. We've heard you've destroyed. You heard your ship was destroyed protecting the Kittimer. I'm glad we heard wrong, because we need some help down here. My team is pinned down. The Borg are capturing colonists. We need help. So we're going to beam down, and you get an away team. Um, sometimes it'll limit how many you can get. Uh, most away teams are you and four others which means you and four other players, or you and four bridge officers. Um, this case, I'm limited to only one bridge officer, and since I only have one bridge officer to take, we will take a Corpsa. Corpsa. And it'll show you what skills she has. Currently, the only skill she has is Photon Grenade, and, but Photon Grenade is fun. So we are beaming down. Hey, we got some skill points. So, now that I'm here, 
and there is my lovely, lovely Andorian bridge officer, who is exactly the same as everybody else's lovely, lovely bridge Andorian bridge officer, because that is the one everybody gets to start with. Um, all right. So the first thing is, you'll see up on the underneath your portrait there is her portrait, and she's got some buttons. You could tell her to manually use a power uh, if she's got a target for it. Um, and you have some options. Uh, the top buttons here uh, affect your entire away team. So if I had three or four guys, I could give them all orders with this. Or you can give in individual orders, like if I wanted her to go there. That's a rally point. She will basically hang around there, and if combat shows up nearby, like she won't follow me. And if combat showed up near her, she would go over, do her combat, and then go back to that point. Uh, that's really useful if you want them not to walk into things like minefields, or if you just want them to stay put. Uh, if you right-click on it, it will take it off, and she will come back and start following you again. Uh, you can also set her to passive mode, so that she'll follow you, but she won't attack. And you can... Uh, use this to uh, select targets. Alright, so we need to talk to this guy over here. So let's talk to Commander Kelly. Borg are attempting to get a foothill hit, but they're rounding up colonists, not assimilating them immediately. I don't know why they're acting this way, because they're crazy Borg, and this is the uh, tutorial, and we don't want to just outright kill you. Alright. Oh, and as you can see here, here's somebody who has a custom uh, designed... Uh, uniform, or at least a little bit. Tweak the colors a little bit. Same thing with uh, Solari here in front of me. So we're going to talk to Enzin. I don't even know how to do that. Alright, kits. You can learn about kits. I know about kits, so I will just tell you. So we're going to grab st we're gonna grab some loot from the crate. This is going to give us a kit, and it gives us a new weapon, which is great because I love sniper rifles. Sniper rifles are fun just because they give you some distance. Okay, so I'm going to open my hit I to open my inventory and hit K to open uh, brings up your skills, but you can also ah you will bring up your status window. Um, you also notice up here there's reputation. Uh, you don't have to worry about that until level fifty. So, kits. Uh, there's a bunch of different kits, and kits are class-specific. As you can see, this one's for engineers. Um, the higher the level kit, the more interesting powers it will have. Uh, this is the crappy level 1 kit, so all it does is create mines. Mines are kind of fun. They lay down a little bit of a minefield, and anybody who runs through it takes damage. So, I'm going to go ahead and equip the kit. Blah, blah, blah. Now, you can see I now have, since since the kit is now equipped, and let's see if I can get a front view here. You can see I have the little uh, kit belt on now. Little pouches and stuff, and it's got a little holster for my gun, and I get a little thingy on my arm. It's kind of cool. However, the kit sometimes can get a little bit obnoxious. So what we're going to do is, there's a little eyeball next to the kit. If I click that, that will turn the kit off. I think you're, you're still using the kit, you still get the effects of the kit. See, I've got the mines down here still. But you don't get the visuals, which is really nice, because sometimes you just want to run around in your uniform. Um, if you hit Z, you can switch between equipped weapons. So there's my sniper rifle, and there's my phaser. So we now have a mission to assist, to rescue four colonists. So we're going to head into town here. And there's a lot of other people running around, so we'll sometimes uh, have to uh, contend with the fact that other people are trying to do this mission at the same time. Oh, and I'm going to close my inventory window. So every now and then we'll see some Borg threatening a citizen. And what are we going to do? We're going to kill them. 
I'm going to open up with my sniper rifle. Be a nice aimed shot. Oh, and she used her grenade, which is nice. Um, the sniper rifle secondary is a targeted long-range shot, and it does a lot of damage, but it has several. It's got a couple of seconds of uh, powering up, so it's not uh, not usable all the time. And you'll find sometimes if there's a lot of people in a bigger bigger mission, one of the uh, STFs or something. You'll find that sometimes the uh, your targets will die before you get your sniper shots off, which is kind of annoying. But for this, not a big deal. So we'll just drop these board, rescue some citizens, and there's three down. And... Oh, somebody else is doing this as well. One of the nice things, though, is that... Um, if you're in an open area like this and there's more than one person trying to do a quest, since I killed a couple of Borg and somebody else, uh, Ruin over there, killed some Borg, chance to roll good, we both got credit for that. Which is wonderful, because it means that people aren't going to be stealing each other's kills, basically. It's one of the most frustrating things is when you're trying to finish up a mission and you go over and somebody tags it before you do. And, uh, so then you're stuck having to find another target or something. And there's lots of targets here, so it's not a huge deal, but it still can be kind of annoying. Um, we're going to kill these Borg just because they're Borg and killing them is fun. Boom! Generally speaking, tactical officers get grenades, um, which is why I don't have any. Alright, and they have a couple of turrets set up. So we're going to take those out. There's a couple of Borg and a couple more turrets. Alright, and then we have to lower the force field, so we need to look for, and there it is, the glowy... some sort of Borg uh, implement that shuts down the force field. And oh look, dudes. And there's a glowy, another little implement to shut down the array. But of course, before we can do so, we get tactical drones. And a heavy tactical drone. The heavy tactical drone is, of course, slightly tougher than the regular tactical drones. But not all that much tougher because, again, tutorial. Tutorial's not overly tough. And then we click on this. And we complete and go to the next thing, step. And then we beam up to the ship. Because we are done with that first part. Ensign Rogers. You'll, you'll see Admiral Quinn quite a bit, because he is the Admiral in charge of Earth Space Dock. And he is who you go back to every time you uh, rank up. Uh, every ten levels or so, you get a new rank... And you'll get a new ship, at least uh, until a certain point. And he'll, you'll have to go talk to him to get your uh, permission to go buy your tank, your your ship. Blah, blah, blah. Congratulations. I've heard good things about you. Hopefully you don't suck. Warp to the rally point. Alright, we are now on the outskirts of the Vega system. we got to head to any navigation bacon to meet up with a battle group. Alright, so, if you look on your map, you'll see there are all kinds of nav, nav beacons, which are the little diamonds. And the circle, of course, shows your area of something or other. So we're going to go over to this one. Since there are some red, uh, red diamonds on the map, which are enemies. Which would be that one there. And we'll kick in uh, full impulse. Oh, well, that one's dead. But we'll head there anyways. So we have to go to a beacon before we do anything else. Yeah, see, there's a ship named Up Yours. Just lovely, isn't it? 
All right, so we have to destroy a Borg cube and a Borg sphere. Well, that one's dead. There we go. So we're going to see if we can get into combat here. Now, one thing to keep in mind whenever I'm giving advice about how I do play, how uh, combat and stuff is going, that a lot of this is, is uh, colored by my own preferences. One of the really th nice things about Star Trek Online, something I really, really enjoy, is that there is really no wrong way to play it. There are some less effective ways to play it, and if you're looking to do endgame content, some of the elite uh, st uh, strike forces and stuff like that, then, you know... Some of the groups will, you know, you're going to want to make sure you're built a certain way or whatever, because otherwise the groups you might play with will complain. For the most part, you can do this entire game playing whatever style you want, mixing and matching, running whatever weapons, you know. You can play the most stupid way possible, and some stuff's going to be tough if you do it that way. But, you know, it's not terrible. Alright, so we talked to Quinn after we blow up the, sphere, the cube. And he says, good work. Tell me, if you considered command, you'd make a fine starship captain. In fact, you've already proven it. Because, you know, nothing... <laughs> Seven seasons, poor Ensign Kim spent as an ensign on Voyager. We come in here, and in five minutes, our ship gets blown to heck, our command crew all gets killed, and they promote you to captain. All right. So he wants us to go back to the Earth space dock. Congratulations. And we just leveled, and you heard and you heard Spock say, congratulations. So we have to warp to uh, Earth Space Dock. So we're going to enter warp, because there's still fighting going around, but apparently I don't need to worry about the rest of these Borg. Again, the nature of an MMO. You only need to do as much as you need to do. So welcome to Earth Space Dock and the crap load of uh, ships that are always parked outside of it. Oh, and because I haven't uh, gotten into a fleet yet, I'm getting fleet invites already. So what I am going to do is, since I am part of, I'm part of the RPG Net fleet, uh, I'm going to pause this so that I can get a fleet invite, and that'll stop those. Okay, that's taken care of. I am now a member of Vanguard Group Omega, which is the RPG Net Federation fleet. Uh, we also have a fleet called the House of Vigo, V apostrophe G O, uh, and VGO, of course, is Video Game Other, which is the main video game forum for RPG Net. All right, so I now need to dock at Earth Space Dock. So when you get in here, you have to fly a little closer. It doesn't automatically allow you to dock. So we're going to zoom in a little bit. And we can click dock. Or there's other stuff you can do. You can actually fly in and manually dock, but uh, maybe we'll do that a little bit later. It's interesting the first time, and after that you're kind of like, eh, let's just get on with it. Earth Space Dock tends to take a little while to load compared to the other zones, uh, largely because there's a lot going on in Earth Space Dock, and at any given point there's a zillion players. Right, we get the little cutscene that's showing us. They don't use these nearly enough. The little uh, holographic, hey, this is where you gotta go button. They use them here, and they use them in one or two other uh, missions, and that's about it. That's kind of a shame, because these are nice. And granted, it's, it's you know, lazy man gaming. <laughs> They're gonna take us all the way here. And there's somebody who's actually taller than I am. Although I'm not actually terribly tall, I'm a bit taller than average. So we're going to follow this, and this will take us over to Quinn. And hey, look, right now the winter event is going on. And it's Q's Winter Wonderland. And that is Q. Actually, it's the son of Q, who is also named Q. But he is the son of the uh, Q character from the TV shows. 
I mean, he is hanging out on his throne, and uh, he's got people doing snowball fights, and there's a ship you can get, and it's kind of cool. It's a neat winter event. So anyways, we come over and we talk to Admiral Quinn. And Admiral Quinn is going to uh, make it permanent that I am the captain of the USS Triton. Uh, so now we can use some new equipment for our ship. He's, I have improved some improved consoles. So I get to choose one of these. Uh, I can take a damage resistance. I could take a starship flow capacitor, which affects transfer rates and such of power, I believe. I'm not 100% positive. I never mess with that stuff much. Or I can take phaser relay, which gives me bonus phaser damage. I think you can bet. I think I think you can guess which one I'm going to take. Uh, there's also some tutorials, and because I'm going, just because I'm going to take the tutorials, uh, just to kind of show you guys around. And then one of your first missions is stranded in space, uh, and we can talk to him. Tips for new captains. You can ask him about getting your own ship and all that stuff. But Close this window out. I'm not going to sweat it too much. Alright, well, that was the tutorial. Um, if you skip the tutorial, what happens is you end up at the Space uh, Star Starfleet Academy on Earth. Um, which you can beam down to from here. And at Starfleet Academy, you are part of a graduating class that is, and apparently you're very promising, so they just make you captain. They let you skip all the other crap and go, okay, you know what, you don't have to be an ensign, you can be a captain. It's a little lame. But, you know, you got to do something for the game to give some vague rationale for why you're not spending years slogging away as a, you know mechanic on a starship until you can actually do something fun and cool. Because, you know, you normally wouldn't get to command your own starship right out of the gate. Anyways, that's going to do it for me for now. Uh, I'm going to log off, and uh, yeah, this will be interesting. Uh, I'm new to the whole video thing, so hopefully this wasn't too terrible. And I'm new to YouTube, so hopefully I can figure that out. And we'll be back uh, with this character. We'll play Roger the Alien. <laughs> a little bit later, and uh, we'll go through more of Star Trek later. Take care, guys.